Bwana Sifiwe and good morning. Welcome to Shiloh, place of breakthrough. This is where breakthroughs are, and we are a testimony. Bwana Iswa Sifiwe. My name is Beatrice Waithaka, and I'm born again this morning. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I want to honor the authority of this house, our bishop, you know, Pastor Alice, the pastoral team, and you, because you came. When I see few. Yes, I want to bring the word of the Lord this morning. Uh, this year, we've been doing, repossessing, redigging and repossessing the altars of our fathers. And this morning, by the grace of God, we want to re rekindle the altar fire. Rekindle the altar fire. Are we together? Let's pray for the word. Our Father and our God, in Jesus' name, we are forever grateful because you have a compass on this earth and this is your word. We thank you because nobody went wrong with your word, our Father. And nobody had enough of your word, King and Glory. We are here, dear Father, every day to your master. We interact with your word, to your master. Then you come back on Sunday to your father for celebration of what the word has done in our lives for the last seven days. And therefore, this morning, we surrender ourselves to you, to your Lord. There's nothing that I can offer unless you give it to me, Jehovah Father. I send myself to you, Jehovah Father, as a conduit of grace to your father. Use me to speak to your people because you've gathered them in this place to your Lord. Not because Oh, this is a business meeting to your father. No, because this is a political meeting, Jehovah. But be, this is because it is your meeting, Jehovah God. Speak to your children through me to your Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you. We want to bless you. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Exodus 12, 20 verse 24. Exodus 20 verse 24. And the New Living Translation. Build for me an altar made of earth, and offer your sacrifices to me, your burnt offerings and peace offerings, your sheep and goats and your cattle. Build an altar wherever I cause my name to be remembered, and I'll come to you and bless you. It is the Lord who is making an appeal to us, or to the children of Israel by then. But it applies even to us now. The build for me, not for us, but for me. For who? For the God, for your God, your creator. An altar of earth. I want to remind us this morning, friends, that we are made of earth. We are not made of wood. We are not made of stones. That we are made of earth. Earth ni muchanga. Turn to your neighbor. Mwambia, webe ni muchanga. Without the breath of God, webe ni muchanga. It doesn't matter how smart you are, where were ni? And the Lord said, an, an altar made of earth. For what? And offer my sacrifices. And offer sacrifices to me, not to us. It is to God, your creator. Your bad offerings and peace offerings. Burnt offerings were the offerings of sin. Because we, in this flesh, on this earth, on this flesh... We, we must interact with the sin. And I want to thank God for the children of Israel. They were removed from where they were and put in Goshen. There was no sin in Goshen. Are we together? When there was darkness in Pharaoh's place, there was light in Goshen. But lo and behold, for us who are living in these days, in this flesh, we don't have any particular place to live in. We don't have a Goshen. The only place we can live in, it is living in the Lord through salvation and by his grace. Therefore, it is us who are going to build the earth for the Lord. Where we can burn our, we can bring our burnt offerings. After the burnt offerings, then we can bring the peace offerings. When we are accepted, this is the book of 1 John 1, that if you repent your sins, I'm faithful and just to forgive you. When you repent and your sins are forgiven, then you offer a peace offering. Then you work together with this creature. I love God and I love him because he knows that me and you, we cannot make it without his grace. An altar is a place of relationship between a holy God and to you. Can you imagine a holy God? A God who cannot fit in this world. He only lives in heaven. 
A cord cannot fit here. That only he can does that his only it's only his feet that can be placed on this earth. That is our God. But because of the grace, because of the blood of your son Jesus Christ, that we can present ourselves in that altar. Amen. It is a place where he can meet with you and fire can fall. When you meet with the Lord, believe you, friends, fire must come down because it must separate you, the man and the living God and the holy God. Therefore, must Fire must be present to come and cleanse us. Are we together? Look at the life of Moses. When the Lord called Moses, Moses could not come where the Lord was because he saw a bush that was burning. And everything was green. It was intact. But you see, this is a bush that is burning, which was very extraordinary before the eyes of Moses because the Lord was there. What did the Lord tell Moses? Remove your shoes because where you are standing, it is a holy ground. And as friends, we are going to remove our shoes and whatever can hinder us to go where the fire is. When the fire falls down, it is the fire of blessing. It is the fire of renewal and the fire of revival. We are very far from the Lord, friends. The Lord is there and we are far-fetched. He's there, we are here. In between us, what is there? The Lord is saying, I'm going to bring down my fire so that you can draw close and see what is in that fire and then you can see me. An altar is a place of fellowship. That's where the writer wrote that you, where you are, you offer burnt offerings. You cannot go before the Lord and there's no fire. There must be a fire. When you reach where he is, there must be a fire between you and him. You offer burnt offerings. You repent, and then after repenting, your sacrifices are received. Buana Yesu Asifiwe. Are we together? An altar of earth so that the Lord can break it and mold it. And Lord, the Lord told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 18, verse 6. Jeremiah 18, verse 6. Oh, Israel. Can't I do to you as this potter has done to this clay? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Allow the Lord to mold you, friend. There are those small, small, small things, those small, small jokes, those small, small, you tell me they are not since they are habits. Yes, those small, small habits. And you know nowadays people don't steal. They only take. Uriba pana nirichukua. You saw those habits. Can you let the Lord mold you? Just lay yourself in the hands of the Lord. Make him to mold you. The Lord cannot mold Mbao. He cannot mold a wound. He cannot mold a stone. That's why he said, create in building me an altar of earth. So that at my own timing, I can mold you and make you the kind of a person that's going to please me. Because you are alive with a purpose. You not create yourself. The Lord created you. Some of us, we are, we are very far from where we are. When you got born again, there are things you could not do. There are places you could not go. But nowadays we say, I'm not corrupt. Maybe I'm not corrupt. As Kari aliniambia nipatie 500. Because it was on a Friday. Nikefanya nini kama nungu ngefanya nini? Friday. Niwe kwa ndani Friday. Na sande niko kwa worship team. Niwe kwa ndani Friday. Na sande niko kwa ushering. Niwe kwa ndani Friday. Na sande niko wherever you be. So what did you do? You gave. But you're not corrupt. You did not sin. Are we together friends? Why are we, why are we quoting sin? Calling them habits. Nobody was created with a habit. We only pick the habits along the way. And you so saw it is good. Sin. You criticize. You exaggerate. Uli muona. I told you upon this order that the Bible speaks about Lazarus. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a short man. But what do you say? Aliko mfupi kama nyundo. Uli toa wapi hiyo? Uli toa wapi? You could from the Bible. Is it written? Anasema, Zacchaeus was a short man. Period. Those are the habits. But the Lord is saying, just like a potter takes the clay and molds it, he crushes it, then molds it. 
to the kind of a vessel he's after. Can you release yourself to the, to, the pot, to the potter? You don't know the way. The potter knows the way. You don't have any other truth. The potter knows the, 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 potter knows the truth. You don't have the light, but the potter knows the light. He said, just us. He says, just as, oh Israel, can I not do to you as this potter has done to this clay? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. It doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are, how fat you are, how slender you are, you are in my hand. And that is the beauty. God makes us all of us to be equal so that you can fit in his hand. In the Old Testament, the altar was related directly to the spiritual and material blessings God intended for his people. The altar. It was established so they could be restored to fellowship with him by bringing sin, guilt, and fellowship offerings. That was the purpose of the altar. But this altar, this altar must be made of earth. In God's plan, the altar is a place for expressing lasting love. At the altar, the altar, I'm not talking about this altar, but the altar is in your heart. The altar in your heart is a place of expressing love. Love to who? To your maker, to your friend, to your confidant, to your a friend. I talked about a friend on this altar. A friend who sticks closer than a brother. Friends. That is the purpose of the altar. At the altar, we give and receive. You give yourself at the altar and then you receive the mercies of God. You receive the grace of God to carry you through this life because this life that you are in, the, self, the life of salvation, it is a journey and you need the grace to carry you through this journey. Restoring an altar for fresh fire today is not about building a physical structure. No, that we bring down this structure. No, it's not about building a physical structure or maintaining a natural fire. Rather, the altar God desires is a heart that's fully committed to him. What is your heart committed to? To your business? To your spouse? To your family? But he wants other things fully committed to him. Do you know in heaven, friends, there will not be any, any married person you're telling me, no, me, I'm committed to my husband. I have no problem. But in heaven, we be sons of the most high God. I don't know where you are, your wife will be because we be all sons. Akuna, daughters, we be all sons in heaven. So the Lord wants a heart that is fully committed to him, not partly. In the book of Proverbs 3, verse 9, Proverbs 3, 9, the Bible says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with your best part of everything you produce. This is about everything, but the Bible declares that your heart is the first fruit. Your heart is the first fruit. Your heart. In the name of Jesus. The altar stood at the core of God's plan of salvation because it pointed to the cross of Christ, which is the source of all God's blessings. Whatever we need, it is at the cross. Every blessing, it is at the cross. Let's have some ashes. Washo, please, please help our sister Ruth. It is okay. It is okay. The rest, yes. Come back here. Yes. The altar then is where worship of God Almighty originates. You want to be a worshiper? It originates at the Altar. Worship is acknowledging God as creator and redeemer. Who is your creator? And who is your redeemer? Acknowledge him as your creator and your redeemer. The beginning and the end. You have no beginning. He is your beginning and your end. It means not only making him first, but also start everything and finishing everything with him and for him. You begin and end everything for him and with him to his own glory. Buana yesu apewe sifa. Tuko pamoja. The only way we can build an altar and bring the sacrifice of worship that honors God is by making him Lord of everything. Not Lord of some things. Lord of 
everything. That whatever you have, whatever concerns you, it is all about God. As we live by the principles of his power and authority, it becomes very natural and desirable to be in right standing with the one we worship. Amen. There is a difference between an altar and a platform. Altars deliver, but platforms promise, and promises, promises are not realistic. We were here last year, and la uh, last year during the campaigns, the, 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 the politicians promised us so many things on the platforms. Do we have them today? Were they achieved? They promised a lot. Did they deliver? They didn't deliver. We keep on waiting and holding for the next five years. Then they come back and build castles in the air. But the beauty is, altars deliver. Whatever was promised upon the altar, the Lord will deliver it. Let us look. I don't, I don't say, I want to say how many things because you don't know what I've written. Number one, how we can maintain the fire at the altar. Number one, keep the fire burning. Keep the fire burning. In the book of Leviticus 6.13, Leviticus 6.13, the Bible says, remember. Do what? Remember. It means they were told before, but now the Lord is reminding them. Remember. It seems there are something they are going through, but the Lord wants to show them the remedy by telling you to do what? To remember. Remember, the fire must be kept burning on the altar at all times. It must never go out. Not for some time, but all the times. When things are good, the fire must be burning. When things are down, the fire must be Mweziki wa kona, the fire must be. Mweziki wa dagoreti kona, the fire must be. But now, we keep on fluctuating. Keep fluctuating. But the Lord is saying, let the fire at the altar. To do what? To keep on burning. The fire of God in heaven is never extinguished. We can extinguish the fire on earth, but the fire of God in heaven is never extinguished. Sometimes, on the earth, we quench that which should remain burning. You, 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 you put off what's supposed to keep on burning. And then you lift, lift another fire. We're supposed to be what? To be quenched. Here's a problem. Without the altar, there's no place for sacrifice. Without the altar, there's no place for sacrifice. And a good example is Abraham and Isaac. When Abraham took Isaac to Mount Moriah. He prepared the altar. He laid the sacrifice. Before he sacrificed Isaac, God provided the sacrifice. Are we together, friends? We have the altar. We don't have the sacrifice. So there's no fire. Look at Elijah at Mount Carmel. Elijah prepared the altar. And then the fire came from where? From heaven. We are there. We are waiting for him to bring down fire. But there is no altar. He wants us to prepare our altar. So that he can bring fire from where? From heaven. When the fire on the altar dies. What happens? Worship becomes a ritual. You just worship. Because you have to worship. Therefore worship becomes a ritual. Love becomes self-giving. Self-serving. Spiritual life simply becomes religion. Yes, you are born again, but there's nothing you cannot do. We know you are born again. But it has become a religion. There's no, nothing you cannot do. There's no talk you cannot talk. There's no conversation. You cannot changia. And you are born again. Because it became a religion. There are no boundaries. It became a religion. Number two. Reasons that make the fire goes out. Number one, it is neglect. Neglect. We are busy attending to our personal interest. But the Bible says in Matthew 6.33, seek the kingdom of God above everything else and live righteously 
and he will give you everything you need. You begin with seeking. Then everything will follow you. He said, seek. You seek the kingdom. But what are we seeking? The last two days. What are we seeking? Today, if you want the fire of revival, we must do as Jesus said and seek his kingdom first. Seek his kingdom. When you seek, you seek him, when you find him, everything will be given to you. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. We also worship false gods. Those are the things that make our fire to go off. This was one of, one of the main reasons, one of the main sins of God's people in the Old Testament that caused great ruin. They worshipped false gods. And you read the Bible that this king ruled Israel for this, and then he did evil before the eyes of God. And you ask, can't he do good? That's how the Lord is asking even this morning. With all that I've done to you, can't you just worship me instead of worshiping false gods? What are four false gods the times that you are living? We may not see it with our eyes, but you know in your heart whom you worship. But the Lord is saying, I am a jealousy God. Worship me and me alone. Every time we exalt persons, every time we exalt spiritual gifts, every time we exalt programs, all activities above the things of God, we put out the fire. Money is good and I love it. But the moment you exalt money above God, one thing will happen your fire will go off. Exalt God, and then he'll give you the money. Because he has everything. Everything includes money. Everything includes a good wife. Everything includes a good husband. Every good thing includes salvation of your loved ones. But he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. After you find it, everything shall accompany you, even overtake you. Our God does not share his glory. When we attempt to lift others or ourselves into glorifying roles, we must repent and praise the Lord who deserves it. Sometimes we over, we over sacrifice. Sacrifice for the wrong reason. King Saul lost his kingship because he offered a sacrifice he was not authorized to make. And you get it from the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 13. The Bible says, but Samuel said, what is this you have done? So replied, I saw my men scattering from me, and you didn't arrive when you said you old. And the Philistines were at Michmash ready for, but hold it there. The Lord, Samuel asked Saul, what is this you have done? And that's the question the Lord is asking us this morning. My son, my daughter, what is this you have done? You know for sure you have crossed boundaries. And he's asking, what is this you have done? And Saul, full of human, he said, I saw my men. Whose men? I saw my men scattered in from me. And you didn't arrive when you said you old. And the Philistines were at Michmash ready for battle. The next verse, verse 12. So I said, he didn't consult anybody, he said to himself. So I said, the Philistines are ready to march against us at Gilgal. And I haven't asked for the Lord's help. Hold it there. You see how we do things? He didn't ask for the Lord's help. He did it by himself because he saw he can do it. Doing what? Making a sacrifice. Friends, this is what the Lord is asking us this morning. Because now I am coming. Will I find faith in Shiloh? Will I find faith in this EIK? Will I find faith in Kenya? So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering myself before you came. Let's continue. How foolish. You can think somebody is rude, isn't it? How foolish. foolish, Samuel explained. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. Had you kept it, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. Pass number 14 is the, is the it, it is very painful. 
But now your kingdom must end. For the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. The Lord has already appointed him to be the leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. It analyzes that sentence. The times that you have left the ways of the Lord. The times that you have made sacrifice you're not supposed to make. And I said when I began, the times that you bribed, you bribed to make, to, to, to make your way. You bribed to buy your way. You bribed so that you can get that license. You bribed so that things can go your way. But Samuel said, oh foolish are you. The Lord does not work with the foolish people. He wants us to be wise. The kingdom of God is not for foolish people, but for wise people. One Saul had waited for Samuel until the seventh day, just as we've been waiting for the Lord. And you say, now I am 35 years. I can buy my way. I'm now approaching 40. And nobody's forthcoming. I think I can go out and make a sacrifice. Get somebody. Get a child. And then we come back to the house of the Lord. And then we can. You can do what? You can decorate your marriage. But what matters, friends, it is the foundation. The foundation are very key. The foundation are going to sustain you in salvation. They are going to sustain you in that marriage. There are no shortcuts. Look at, look at Abraham. The Lord promised Abraham a hair. But you know, the Lord has, uh, has taken long, just a soul, and decided, I can take Hagar. Hagar is like Sarah. Yeah, he took Sarah. You see the consequences? Friends, let's wait for the Lord. He said, I will come. He has not yet come, but he's coming. He may not come at sunrise, he'll come at sunset. Can you have the grace to wait upon him until he comes? God has not appeared on our timetable. Yes, you have a timetable. You said, me after 30, yeah, I'm going to get married at 30. Now you are 32. Did I count well? Am I 30 or 29? You are 32. You are 32. Therefore, we move on and we move out of his will. When you move on, friends, you move out of the will of God. See, you have money. You can do anything because you have money. But money is not everything. Money is just a master. Tell it to go and work for you. Tell it to go and come. Money is only a master. But what about your heart? In heaven, there'll be no money. We'll be stepping on the roads made of gold. None of us here have seen the pure gold. But in heaven, the roads will be made of gold. Now what is money? That you can exchange your life and your salvation because of money. May the Lord remember mercy. Number three, only God can start the fire. Only God and start the fire. Sometimes in our Christian walk, instead of going to God and asking him to send, to send his fire, we start our own fires. The Lord does not use a matchbox. You can only use a matchbox. If not a matchbox, they used to, the old people used to it doesn't use those techniques. But it's only God who can send his fire. We start our own fires. Our own fires cannot take us anywhere. We then try to fan that fleshy fire through activities, events, or programs. Because this fire, you don't want it to go, to, to get, to go off. So you keep on fanning it with activities, with the programs, so that people can say, Atawewe uko. Uko uko wapi? But human fire is very destructive. For every human fire we start in the house of the Lord, particularly in spiritual ministry, a price must be paid directly 
or indirect or directly, either today or in the future. Tell, we tell friends, you began a fleshy fire. You began that fire in the ministry in the house of God. I tell you this, if you don't pay the price, with the time we will tell, this one was not from the Lord. Because it cannot stand the storm of life. But allow the Lord to rekindle that fire into you. In Leviticus 9.24 Leviticus 9.24 Fire blazed forth from the Lord's presence and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When the people saw this, they shouted with joy and fell face down on the ground. Why? Because their sacrifice has been accepted. The fire from where? From heaven. And when the fire from heaven is the presence of the Lord. He comes down in that form, in a form of fire as his presence. All their sacrifices and incense must be offered with this fire. Friends, nothing goes to God but what comes from him. Nothing goes to God but what comes from him. The priest must keep it burning with the constant supply of fuel. And the fuel must be owned and the cleanness of wood. As we have come from Yes, let's, uh, who are brought up in the up country. In the morning when you wake up, the first thing before you lit the fire is to remove the ash. Anybody who can bear with me witness? Yes. Unga washa moto na jivu ya jana. It is fresh every day. Cindy, yo. Pastor Brian, how is it? Yes. Uh, you enter in, in, in the kitchen. Not in the, in the see, kitchen, come here, squeeze. In the kitchen, the kitchen was separate from the main house. So you go to the kitchen, and the first thing is to remove the ash. Then you light the fire. Friends, what is in our hearts now is a lot of ash. Therefore, there is no fire that can be lit in that. The Lord is trying to bring down his presence, the fire from heaven, but the ash is too much. It is you who knows the kind of ash that is in your heart. Though the priest could come and bring the cleanness of fuel, we must never create things of the flesh and call them things of the Lord. And finally, the, the last one is the fire of obedience. The fire of obedience. Obedience is a choice. You can choose to, choose to obey and not to obey. Nobody will force you to obey. Obedience is a choice. Our worship is demonstrated through wholehearted obedience to God's will. Indeed, the only way to honor God and express our love for him is by obeying him. And you cannot obey two people. You either obey God or obey the other one. So you are the other one. And obeying all of them, if you obey God, there is eternal life. You obey this other person, there is Eternal fire. Yes, all, 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 all of them have internals. It's either eternal fire or eternal life. Obedience requires total submission to God and determination to fulfill his purpose. This road to heaven is very bumpy. It's used to obey. This road has so many things that can cause you not to go. But unless you obey and tell the Lord, I've made up my mind, the cross before me, the, the world behind me, it is you to obey. That is why obedience is better than sacrifice in God's eyes. It doesn't matter what you do for the Lord. Yes, you are the, you are the best intercessor. You are the best singer. You are the best, wash best wash you are the best tither. But obedience is better than before you tithe, before you sing, before you wash, before you preach. Obey him. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You may look at somebody now. Who you? Who you? Hana mbel hana. You manavi na umbaga. Watcha na watu wa mungu. Watcha mtu wa mungu wa ombe. You don't know the connection between this person and, and his God. You don't know the the, the 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 altar that this person has built that the Lord comes down because this person has done one thing that for me to live it is Christ. Obedience involves your whole heart 
will, soul, and strength. Obedience to God is more than an emotional response to music or a moving message. It is more than that. It all, always involves some measure of sacrifice at the altar. That is why it was so painful for Jesus to go to the cross. Because he sacrificed himself. Just had everything on his sin. He had anything, name it, but he didn't have sin. But he went to the cross because of you, sinner, and me, the sinner. He sacrificed himself. We are what you are because of the work of the cross. He will have the power to say, no, you cannot crucify me. But when he sees you and sees me, he let it go, all that he had. You know, sacrifice because of us. Jesus fulfilled the will of the Father. Remember at the garden of Gethsemane, he said, his father, he said to his father, if it is your will, I will take it. If it is my will, remove this cup from me, because it was very painful. But he said, not where is my will, but it's what your will be done, and his will was done. And that's why me and you, today we can say we are born again. Born again from what? Born again from sin. We were sinners. The only person who gave birth to a perfect man is a Muslim, because they give birth to Muslims. But as we are born pagans, but along the way, we meet the Jesus, and we surrender our will to him. Buenas Sifiwe. Jesus fulfilled the will of the Father through obedience, through maintaining humility of attitude and purity of heart. We want to be more like Jesus. We must surrender our way to friends. Fire on the altar for a fresh fire of revival. It begins with you and with me. The fresh fire of revival. It begins with you and me. It begins with knowing the will of God for our lives. Because I know every one of us. You know what I said? Jesus is my personal, not our savior, but my personal, you all need personal savior. It begins with you. That only Jesus can give you a testimony. We may look at you and judge you, but Jesus says, no. I have one man, as he told Satan. I have one man. Job. That man cannot deny me. Can I just give you a testimony. That regardless of what they go through, that man cannot deny me. And you see what Job went through. And what he went through was a storm that for me the Lord has said, I have one man that cannot deny me. Even when the wife told him, deny this God and die, he said, you talk like a foolish woman. Friends, we need the fire at the altar. We need to revive the fire at the altar. I don't know where you are. I want to take a short account of your life. The time you got born again. And where you are today. Are you retrogressing? Or are you progressing? Because something somewhere happened. And the fire went off. The worst tragedy, friends, in this Christian life is to let your fire, the altar fire, go off. Because there's no sacrifice. When the Lord comes down, he looks at the, at the sacrifice. You, prepare the, you Have you prepared the sacrifice that he can bring down the fire? If there's no sacrifice, he cannot let the fire come down. You be there in circles, going, coming back. One year, for the 15 years, you are just the same because something somewhere happened and the fire went off. Leviticus said, let the fire of the altar never go off. Regardless of what we'll go through, maintain the fire at the altar so that the Lord can come, back, come down from heaven and ignite that fire once again and burn the sacrifice which is the princess of the Lord. We can be Christians by name. I am born again. Those are the greetings. And I've shared with you, one day the Lord told us that Buana Sifiwe has become even the greetings from the, from the devil. The devil comes from the ocean with, with the word and said, Buana Sifiwe. Because it has, come, it has become greetings like any other. But the Lord is saying, rekindle the fire of your altar. Because I want to bring down fire from heaven and consume the sacrifice and then we can walk together with you. This morning, we want to pray. And I want to ask the ministry team to stand strategically at the back, at the front. We want to pray with you and with me. 
you know where you lost it. Nobody can give a testimony of your fire. We want to rekindle that altar fire. You used to move with the Lord. You used to sleep and then we will speak to you. You used to pray. But nowadays, it has become a ritual. You only pray, our Father in heaven. You pray, hello be thy name. Then you say, amen in the morning. We want to rekindle the fire. We want to rekindle the altar fire because I believe this is our timing for revival. Thank you, Lord. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, follow me. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, follow me. As the day, As the day of Pentecost. Fire, follow me. As the day, As the day of Pentecost. Fire, follow me. Sing fire, 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 fire. Fire, follow me. Sing fire, 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 fire. Fire, follow me. As the day, as the day of Pentecost. Fire, follow me. As the day, as the day. Pentecost, fire, follow us today, as the day of Pentecost, fire, follow me. Oh, Father, now our God, that is a prayer cry of our hearts to your Lord, that fire may fall on us to your Lord. Just as the day of Pentecost, you Father. Because when fire fall on us, Jehovah Father, oh God and our master, we will be separated to your Lord. We will be separated from the world to your Father. It is our humble cry this morning, Jehovah. Let your fire fall on us to your Lord as we prepare the altar king in glory. Let your fire, Jehovah Father, come down so that he can consume our sacrifice in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to live an extraordinary life our but Father, we want to be separate from other people to your Lord. Let there be a distinction between us and the other people to your Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are disciples who are called Christians in Antioch to your Father because they looked more like you to your Father. We want to be more like you to your Father. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is only the Father that can make us different. It is only the Father to your Father that can make us stand out to your Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we want to honor you this morning. We want to bless you, dear Father. Thank you, our Father. Help us to rekindle the fire on our altar more and more to you, Father. Help us to remove the ashes, Jehovah, Father, that we can have fresh fire on the altar. We thank you and we bless you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.